Hi there and welcome to this quick tips video on working with patterns inside of GrooveAgent. This tutorial will be relevant for both GrooveAgent and GrooveAgent SE. First of all, I'm adding a track by going to the plus button on the track list. I've gone down to the drum menu and selected GrooveAgent SE and add track. And now GrooveAgent SE4 appears. There's also another way of adding a track and that's to use the plus button in the VST Instruments rack. We've already added the track, so let's click on the E button. To load a drum kit or a drum kit with patterns, we right mouse click on the agent. On the left hand side, I can see the factory agents and the purchased agents. I'm using the Simon Phillips Studio Drums. This is a new expansion pack that contains 27 different drum kit parts that Simon Phillips has meticulously recorded in his studio in LA. We're not talking about the drum kit parts today, so let's go across to the pattern menu. Straight away, you'll see different color coded pads, which represent different patterns for different song segments. Over in the right hand side, you can see the style library. The style library is a library of different drum patterns. Now each pattern has a suggested tempo. So I'm changing the tempo down in my transport window. Groove Agent comes with its own transport so we can preview patterns. Alternatively, we can select follow transport and Groove Agent will follow our main project transport. Now we can click on different pads to preview different patterns and they'll play over the top of whatever we have out in our main project window. You may have noticed that there's not the smoothest of transitions in between pads at the moment. So I'm selecting a pad and going up to trigger mode and selecting next measure. This now means when I click on that pad, it will wait for the next measure before it triggers the pad. So it's always perfectly in time. One of the first things we can change about these patterns is the length. So we select the pad with the pattern on that we want to change and go up to length. I'm selecting one bar. We can change to two bars. And you'll notice the circle inside of the pad will change every time we change the length of the pad. So it'll always give us a visual representation of what's going on with the pattern length. Currently we're only playing full patterns by pressing play in our project window or by holding down with our mouse on one of the pads. Pressing once will only play the first note of the pattern. So I'm going to change this by selecting the pad and going up to play mode and changing from hold to one shot. Now I click once and that pad will play the whole entire pattern. This is handy if you're using external MIDI controllers to trigger these patterns. Let's go through a few pad basics. I've selected the first pad, which is intro three, which corresponds to my performance style in the middle. Now that I've moved it to one, the pattern changes on that pad. There's up to four different intros and endings that we can use on those pads. It's the same concept with fills, except there's eight different fills that we can choose from. In the middle, we've got our eight main pads, which contain patterns that we could typically use in verses, choruses, and even bridges. These are slightly different because we use the complexity slider to control the different grooves. As I move it to the right, it becomes more complex. I drop it down and it drops in intensity. There's 12 different pattern combinations that we can assign to any one of those eight main pads. You can also change swing settings for individual patterns by selecting the pad and moving the swing to the left or the right. Nothing's happening here, so I need to change my quantize setting. And now it's starting to add more swing to this pattern. You can change the quantize setting to tighten up MIDI files, although I very much doubt you'll need it on the Simon Phillips grooves. We can change where the drummer's playing on the cymbals. It's a shank, a tip, and a mixture of both. We can do the same with the ride symbol. So there's the bell, no bell, back to the bell. We can even define when the crash symbol's been used. I'm turning it off for this pad. Let's turn it off for this fill. And back on again. That's a neat overview of what you can do with patterns that come included with a drum kit. But it gets even more interesting. I've selected a pad and I'm going over to my style library. And now I can interchange the pattern on that pad 
with any pattern in my style library. It probably does help to pay attention to the tempo marking written beside the pattern name. When you find something you like, you can go back to the main window and again work with those 12 different levels of complexity. I've selected another pad and I've gone across to the MIDI menu. Now I can access a number of different MIDI files. A number of these MIDI files relate directly to different song segments, so once again it's a great songwriting tool. It's exactly the same as the style menu. We can scroll through and preview different patterns simply by clicking on them. When we find one we like, we can go back to the main window, where we've also got very similar parameters to the style menu. Additionally, we can change between half time, normal speed, and double time. One of the most important questions is, how do we use these patterns in our project? If you go to the icon on the right hand side, you can drag the pattern out into your project. Now this is handy if you're using other doors. If you're using Cubase, then the integration is pretty unique. We simply pick up on a pattern and drag and drop it straight out into the project window. Now we can start building musical blocks for our project. We can zoom in and on the right hand side of the event in the middle there's a little square. We can pick up on that and move it to the right hand side to copy and paste. Don't worry if you get a warning message. This is just telling you that some of the MIDI events are going to trigger numerous patterns. So it means we could have two patterns playing at once. Just turn the follow transport off and select the MIDI icon in the bottom left hand corner. Now in the past we could edit these events in the key editor. Now if we right mouse click on the track and go down to track control settings, we can add a drum map. So select drum map, add and apply. And now there's a little button over on the left hand side of the track. Click on this and you can select the preset that you loaded into Groove Agent. I was using the Hammer Rock preset inside of Groove Agent and now all of the instruments inside of the Hammer Rock preset are listed and mapped in my drum editor on the left hand side. It makes it really easy to make changes to a pattern. I just pick up on a diamond and drag it. And I can look on the left hand side and see where each instrument is. It's really easy to add notes. You just hold down Alt on the keyboard and draw the notes in. You can also edit things like velocity by just drawing in the changes down the bottom. If I'm really happy with the changes that I've made to a pattern, I can use the advanced integration with Cubase to make sure I store this pattern for future use. I simply pick up on the event and drag it to a pad. It replaces the pattern on that pad. I can rename it by right mouse clicking and selecting rename. Then it's as easy as picking up on the pad and dragging it over to the add pattern icon in the pattern menu. Now this pattern will be stored inside of the user menu in the MIDI pattern bank. If you've made significant changes to a preset and you want to be able to recall the whole entire drum kit with patterns, you go up, click on the diamond at the menu at the top, select save preset and simply name the preset. Once you select OK, your preset is stored inside of Groove Agent and you can recall it for use at any point in time. 